if you start with limit management, uh, the first, the most likely, the most common limit that you're going to see as part of your work as a treasury risk or uh, investment management professional are what we call counterparty limits. Um, after counterparty limits come transaction and exposure limits. Um, the idea behind these two limits is to ensure that uh, we restrict the amount of exposure any one given individual can take on behalf of the bank. Uh, next in line are sensitivity. So uh, what happens to our numbers, to our PNL, to our balance sheet, to our exposure when interest rates go up or come down, uh, when volatility goes up or come down, when exchange rates go up or come down. And collectively, when we look at all four of these pieces together, we we call or we um, uh, we name this as the limit management framework. So counterparty limits, transaction limits, exposure limits, and sensitive and sensitivity limits. These four are the primary pieces of the limit management framework that we are going to review as part of this module. So. What I want to see are these exceptions. What I want to see are, is the impact of these exceptions on my numbers, on my exposures, and on my sensitivities. And at, at a board level, uh, what really matters is your ability to identify these exceptions and report these exceptions, rather than reporting all the data on an as-is and where-is basis. So one example that I really, really like is a, is a control framework that was presented earlier uh, by a friend of mine. Um, and here what you see is the identification of an exception. So there is an overall trend that is given by the, by the green line in the middle. And there is an upper and a lower barrier. And as soon as that barrier is touched and breached, you record, generate, and report an exception. That's what we mean by exception. Um, in this case, this exception is every time gold crosses a volatility of, let's say, 2% and uh, you know WTI crosses a volatility of 3% and uh, Euro USD crosses a volatility of 1%. Uh, this is an indication that something in the market has changed that requires more of your attention and you need to decide whether you want to reduce your position or increase your position. Second is a systemic degradation where something just falls through the roof or the floor and stays there. Uh, once again this is an exception that needs to be recorded, identified and reported. And in this specific instance, um, I think if any any deviation that you see here that tells you that something is not right and is not right on a consistent basis, if you look at, uh, for example, the spike that happened in WTI in 2005, compare that to the spike that happened in 2008-2009 and the spike that happened in 2010, you can see that there's a big difference. Uh, the first, the first and the last, the 2005 and 2010 one, are short spikes. The one in the end of 2008 is a long spike. It's a spike that is systemic in nature. It's just gone down. Once again, this requires you to decide whether what's happening is normal for you to evaluate the impact on your numbers and your decision to whether pull out, reduce, or increase exposure to the market. And the last and final one is increased volatility. And if I go back again, you can clearly see that there are numerous instances here where wall actually goes up and comes down, goes up and comes down on a regular basis. 